The Barrel House is brought to you by you, the listener, and those of you who have chosen to support the show over at patreon.com slash barrelhouse, especially our Whiskey Legend tier patrons, Greg, Katie, Lauren, and Joe. Without you, the show wouldn't be possible. Hello, and welcome to The Barrel House. Hello and welcome back to The Barrel House. I am your host, Joe Kane, and today we've got a really good one. This is Balvenie Doublewood 12-year. This was recommended or requested, I do, from one of my best friends of all time, uh, Matt. So, Matt, this episode, I don't do this a lot, but this episode is your episode. So, everybody enjoy. Uh, first, though, I have to thank all of you for being patient over the last few weeks between the day job and some other repairs and upgrades to the studio and all that. It's been a little quiet the past few weeks and I hate doing that to you, but things are starting to come together and before long you'll have more of me than you could possibly ever want. Speaking of which, TikTok. (laughs) The Barrel House now has a TikTok. It's real stupid. I do these like 10 second reviews. I just pour way more than anybody should have at once into a glass and drink it all and then tell you in like one word if you should get it or not. It's a real dumb thing, but it's fun and silly. So we're doing that. So check that out. TikTok, uh, Barrel House podcast on TikTok. I don't know how to link that. I'll figure it out. I'm new to this thing. I'm old. I'm, as you can tell, the stress and age have gotten to me and every single piece of hair has fallen off of my head. Well, you can tell if you're watching the video version every single piece of hair has fallen out of my head just all naturally no razors or nothing this just all happened all on its own uh or something like that you know before we get to the review i have to thank each and every one of you that support the show over at patreon.com slash barrel house like the intro says especially our whiskey legend tier patrons uh especially during that little light content slump that we just went through uh We didn't lose anybody at all, and I was really thinking we might, but all of you stuck in there and were patient with me through all like the changes and stuff, so this is the first episode recorded on a whole new computer setup because my old one shit the bed. So we're doing a lot of stuff here, and there was some roughness around like recording the film appraisers off of a laptop and stuff and all that, all that fun stuff, so... Thank you very much for hanging out and being patient with me through all this. I'm really happy to be back. Um, like I was saying, especially the patrons who hung out giving me money while I was a little light in content, I still made sure to get something out as much as I could, but it was light. Um, this show is 100% listener supported. The value for value model that Patreon provides makes this show possible. So if you get one, buy ten dollars or any value at all from the show go ahead over to patreon.com slash barrel house and help keep the show going and ad free and like honestly if it wasn't for the patreon and some of the money coming in from there i wouldn't have all this whiskey to talk about uh if my recording rig shit the bed i probably would have just had to wash my hands of the show and i I mean i couldn't do the video and stuff all that without it so all that support makes this show possible without all of you the show wouldn't exist and neither would this review so head on over to patreon.com slash barrel house and show me some love please um so with that let's get on to the review i'm excited for this one this is a, gr- a really good bottle i like this one a lot it's space sides aren't my standard it's not my normal wheelhouse but this is a pretty understated space side. It's not as sweet or overly desserty like a lot of space sides are, although it is sweet and desserty. Um, it is aged in ex bourbon casks and then finished for just a couple of months in ex sherry casks. I think two months in sherry casks, 12 years in ex bourbon casks. Um, and 12 eight years is a good age for a scotch. Much younger, and you usually start to get some of those youthful notes that that don't really do the scotch any favors. That said, you all know I'm not a age snob. I don't think the number is the most important thing in the bottle. There are definitely some young whiskeys that are really, really good and some that are not good at all. So 
I've had some old whiskeys that were trash, so it really depends on the juice in the bottle. It's just a lot harder to make young whiskey that's really good. This is a good age range, 12 to 16 years, tends to be the like typical, like matured age range for a scotch. Uh, and this is one of the good ones to get. Double wood is 43% alcohol. It's about 50 bucks. And um, I know it's a very simple label. For this, this little bit here is entirely for the video people. Sorry, audio listeners. Uh, it's gotta be done. It's a very simple label. I'm gonna hold this up to the camera here. And for those of you just listening, Google it. It's not hard to find. Um, but it is just, I just love this label. It's so like, I don't know, it looks old to me. Like it looks like the kind of label, it doesn't look flashy like most new labels do. Like I could grab a number of labels here with really fancy text and lots of colors. And this is just kind of like a beige, would you call that beige label with print on it? I don't know. I'm a fan. I dig it. Uh, and that is kind of like this whiskey. This is a pretty, this is a pretty old school. I don't know if that's the right way to describe it, but it feels like an old school scotch to me. It does not feel like it's doing all these fancy fruity new things. Um, no highfalutin here. This is a back to basics kind of space side. So let's get into this pour. Let me get this thing. Weak cork pop. Although, another bit for the video listeners here. Or video, the viewers instead of listeners. It has one of these flat brimmed tops on it. If you can see what I'm talking about here in the video. Um, those are the best bottles to pour out of. Just the absolute best bottles to pour out of. Um, like they're impossible to spill. You don't get any drippage. Uh, big fan of that. Always looking out for those. Uh, on the nose, super fruity. It's a space hide. It's fruity like crisp, crisp fruits like pears, or like tropical fruits, like almost a little bit like tropical starbursts. I don't know what any of the flavors in tropical starbursts are off the top of my head, but that's immediately what I thought of definitely got some of that honey nut cheerios maltiness drizzled in honey there definitely vanilla from the um bourbon casks there's like a subtle bit of like bitter baking cocoa on that too maybe a little bit a little bit of raisin it's light though. There's not a lot of raisin in it. I think there's a little bit, but it's not, it's not overly forward. It's a really nice nose that, so before I dig into this, um, in my memory, the palette on this is nowhere near as rich. You still get the same, a lot of the same notes, but it's not nearly as desserty. This nose is very sweet. I think the palette is a little more subdued. Yeah, I wouldn't say flat. It's not flat. Hmm. It really follows the nose. It is sweet, but nowhere near as sweet. The nose is like candied sweet. The palate, not so much. Um, still fruity. I think the raisins are a little more dominant. It's a little darker fruit on the palate, but there is still like a little bit of like an apricot pineapple thing going on. A um, little bit of pear, but it's not nearly as crisp. Like maybe like, like baked pear. So you don't get quite that, that uh, brightness to the flavor. It's nice. There's like some honey still, a uh, little caramelly. The oak and sherry show up on the palate. There's like none of it in the nose, but you get a little bit on the palate, although it's not a lot. That The sherry typically has a little mustiness to it. Um, it kind of reminds me of like a damp cellar, but in a good way, if that makes sense. 
This does have some of that, but it's very light. Like the sherry influence on this is pretty, pretty subtle. I think it's mostly just adding a little sweetness and um, that really like a little bit of that must and then a little bit, a little bit, maybe not me. I think there's a, a hint of that kind of almondy note from the sherry, but it's real light. Like I can't tell if it's actually there or if I'm just expecting it from the sherry and I'm digging for it and telling myself it's there. You know what I mean? Um, but it's very pleasant. It's really nice. It's very subtle. It's very easy. You could, this is like one of those whiskeys you could pour like 10 ounces of and just drink it and then really regret and hate your life about it afterwards, but it'd be fine going down. You could drink it like water. There's enough flavor here for it to be tasty, but it is not overly powerful, overly ethanol-y, overly rich or overly dense. The finish has way more character to it to me than the rest of it. I think maybe character is a bad word for it, but character to me, especially in this instance, is when is like like the oak comes through more. It's slightly tannic. It's a little more balanced. I get some of that char that you don't get really anywhere else throughout the entire pour. Um, there's some of the malt on the finish, although it, it tastes... It tastes... Sort of like... Extra toasted Cheerios. Like if you took those Honey Nut Cheerios I mentioned, which I usually associate with malt because it's got that kind of cereal-y note. Um, maybe just regular Cheerios and just kind of toasted them in the oven a little bit tastes a little bit like that ooh, ooh, excuse me um, the finish lingers quite a bit I think the fruit hangs on a little bit longer than everything else except for the malt which kind of hangs in the back of the throat for a while if you do not like malt, if you, if you don't like scotch, which is, here's, here's the thing that most people don't like about scotch. If most people who say they don't like scotch do not like that malty flavor. That's the thing that they're, that they're associating that they don't like. If you don't like malt, you're not going to like this. But overall, if you're good with scotch, if you're good with malt, this is a really nice, subtle finish that lingers quite a long time. It's a little bit sweet. It's fairly balanced. It's pretty good. This is a really nice pour. You need to like that desserty profile that space sides have to like this one. But if you do, it's a great value and a great quality for the price, especially. It's readily available. The proof isn't high. It's on the lower end of like whiskey period right minimum is 40 it's at 43 it's just off of that it's not overly complex it's not overly simple it's it's what i'd say like this is one of those bottles i'd say is an enjoyable pour for anybody on the whiskey experience spectrum because it it, uh, it has a nice has enough nice flavors and complexity to be like a casual pour for a whiskey guy or girl i should say for a whiskey person but it's not so overwhelmingly flavorful that somebody who's new to it's gonna be caught off guard or offended by it so it's i think it's a pretty good for everyone jack of all trades kind of scotch uh you know what they you know they do have like the thing jack of all trades and master of none it does not excel at anything but it's not bad at anything either this does really just kind of have Everything's pretty good. Um, so I'd say if it sounds good to you, if you're somewhere looking to get into scotches, you want to try something a little sweeter, a little easier, like my buddy Bernie 
from work who I talked about on the proof episode. I think this would be a great one to check it out. So if you check it out, let me know what you think. And with that, as always, it's time to wrap it up. So send your questions and comments to barrelhousepodcast at gmail.com. Hit up the barrelhousepodcast.com for all the social media links. Merch links like this wicked sweet V-neck shirt. I wore this today. It got like three people commented on it. So wear that or buy that. Check it out. Wear it. I get like an entire dollar when you buy a shirt. So that's not why I'm telling you to buy a shirt. It's I would love for you to be repping it. And if you do rep it, tag the social media accounts with pictures of you wearing it. And I'm going to repost all that stuff. Um, Barrelhouse.live. www.barrelhouse.live for the live streams and the YouTube. I think also barrelhousepodcast.com slash live will get you to YouTube. And like I said earlier, patreon.com slash barrelhouse to support the show. Keep the lights on or buy me a drink if you think I might be a cool guy to buy a drink for. Until next time, drink whiskey, be merry, and take care. The Barrel House is written, produced, and hosted by Joe Kane, and it's a proud member of the Earglue Media Network. Views and opinions expressed on this show belong only to the mouth they came out of. And as always, please remember to drink responsibly. Slangevin.